Time to hit the road. Um, I've moved the Delta box down into the front here, it's just sitting on the floor. Charging the EcoFlow Delta Max power station from your car's cigarette lighter socket is slow. It's painfully slow. You can see it's charging there off the alternator, getting around about 100 watts. We'll uh, hit the road and drive for about an hour, and then we'll uh, stop and, and check it out. All right, so I've made it to uh, Yarra Glen, which is about an hour and 10 minutes away from where we were camped. I'm just going to jump out and go and check the uh, battery level. Okay, look at that, 25. So we've only added 5% in an hour of driving. It took over an hour of driving to put just 5% charge back in the system. When you do the maths, that's over 20 hours of charging to go from empty to full. Yeah, it's not a good option, especially when you're only driving a couple of hours a day between camps. So I found a better way. I installed an inverter in the back of my Land Cruiser that can deliver up to a thousand watts of power to the echo flow while I'm driving and in theory charge the box up to 10 times faster. So there's plenty of voltage. So we're up around 770, 775. Look at the end of the day, if I can get a sustained 750 to 800, that's fine. I'm perfectly happy with that. So in just a few hours of driving from one campsite to the next, I could recharge the system to 100% capacity. Clearly a much better solution. But I haven't field tested it yet, and that's the purpose of this video. I'm heading out on a three-day road trip into central Victoria, staying somewhere different every night, and we'll see if my theory about the inverter is actually true. So we're the only ones here, which is uh, kind of nice. We've had the whole place to ourselves all night, so I can basically let Buddy off the lead and just let him roam around, which he's loving. You know, he'll walk maybe about 100 metres away and then he keeps looking over his shoulder waiting for me to call him back. He knows there's a boundary and he he's keeps testing it to see how far he can go. I think he understands as, as long as I can see him that it's fine. And um, we seem to have that understanding now that, uh, you know, as long as he can see me and I can see him, then he's going to be okay. Someone's getting their morning exercise. <laughs> I wasn't feeling like cooking up any gourmet feast last night, so I just uh, cooked up a few sausages and uh, got the old induction cooker out and gave it a workout, which I'm about to do again, because I'm gonna make a coffee, because nothing really happens until the coffee gets going. And uh, yeah, it went all right, used about, uh, the uh, Echo Flow used about, um, about 10% of its charge to cook up half a dozen sausages for me and Buddy. So, the mission first is to uh, make a coffee um, and then we'll probably have a bit of breakfast. Oh, you like the idea of breakfast, do you? Yeah. Mm. I don't actually know exactly where we're going to be tonight. We've got, um, it's, it's Friday morning now. We've got till, um, uh, I've got till Sunday. So, uh, a couple of more nights. And I thought we just, I literally didn't even know where I was going to go yesterday when I got in the car. I, I, I got in the car, started the engine and got out the uh, Wikicamps app and just said, all right, so we're somewhere nearby, free state camp, uh, state forest camp um, that we'll go and we'll just, you know, it's an hour or so up the road. Just headed up here and, and found this place, which is great. It's kind of nice to be able to actually just meander around for a bit. So I'm trying something different this trip. I'm, uh, instead of bringing an electric kettle, I'm using my uh, little billy here, which is stainless steel and does work. I've already tested it. Uh, turn it on. Just run it at about 800 watts. And it takes a few minutes. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Yeah. Have a good explore around. Now this weather that we've got right now, which is cold and overcast, could actually end up being the best weather we have all weekend. The forecast is pretty bleak. Um, thunderstorms this afternoon and running all the way over to Sunday. So I suppose I should be making the most of the fact that it's not raining right now. Because uh, yeah, the rest of this video might be about me uh, dodging the rain. So if you watched my video where I went camping up at uh, Rubicon River and I had a bit of trouble with the, um, the induction hot plate overheating, after cooking for six or seven minutes, the induction cooker started throwing up this error message E5 and it would just shut off. I don't know what's going on here, but it uh, won't stay on. I turned it off and left it for a couple of minutes and it started working again. And then it shut off again a couple of minutes after that. Get this error code ES or E5, whichever it is. Now I was using a little cast iron pan and um, a little bit of sort of research after that trip 
told me that maybe the cast iron's not the best way to go. It is conductive and it does work, but it uh, seems to get too hot and causes the, uh, the hot plate to overheat. And uh, so I've got this other pan now, which is uh, one that we had in the, in the cupboard at home, which we use in the, in the kitchen, and uh, it works pretty well. And last night when I cooked my sausages, no problems at all. I'm just running it at about a thousand now, um, which is a bit, bit less than half of its, um, its capacity and it seems to be um, working okay so might have solved the the induction uh, frying pan problem bit of bacon and eggs yeah maybe a sausage one for me all right another one for you <laughs> well you want mine too but this is my breakfast You had yours. Yeah. Shall I save you some? Yeah. Do you like bacon? Yeah. You do. What about sausages? You like them? Yeah. You like this? Wait, wait, wait. Starting to rain. A few drops. Hopefully, it just holds off for about another 20 minutes. Let me get cleaned up and packed up, and then uh, then we can hit the road. So I've decided to head uh, northwest towards Bendigo, and. Um, I'm Slightly optimistic the weather might be clearing up a little bit. But the place I'm heading to is called English's Bridge and we we crossed through there on a ride a couple of years back and um, I remember it being quite a nice spot and it's on Wiki Camps as a, as a good spot to camp uh, so I thought we'll go and check that out and if it's, if it's good I'll stay there and if it's if it's rubbish well I'll have a few hours left of the day to, to go and find somewhere else. Now I've just been literally saying the weather looks like it's clearing up and have a look at this. <laughs> Bendigo is pretty much surrounded by state forests, so uh, there's loads of opportunities to find a camp spot around there. So check out English's Bridge, and if it's good, we'll stay. And if it's no good, we'll just keep going. So I don't know if you can hear that beeping back there, but that's the um, inverter. Um, I presume it's complaining that it hasn't got enough voltage. And we've got the engine running. And it's been doing it off and on for the last sort of half an hour that I've been driving. When we were sort of sitting on highway speeds, um, it would it would settle down and, and run okay and stop beeping. Um, but as soon as we slow down or I turn the headlights on or sort of do anything that sort of reduces the amount of power uh, that the inverter can get, it, um, it starts beeping. It is charging. I mean, it's nearly fully recharged uh, while we've been driving, so it's not like it's not working. It's just that it's, um, it's complaining it's not getting enough voltage. So um, one thing I can try is actually to dial down the, the amount of watts that the inverter is drawing. Uh, I might draw, dial it down to about six or 700 and see if that makes a difference. There goes the phone. Of course it starts raining the moment I start making dinner. Just got the fire going nicely and uh, down it comes. Hopefully just a passing shower. 
Put a bit of a dampener on things, isn't it, hey? I've got a feeling there's a fairly significant downpour on its way here, so I'm going to quickly try and make my uh, dinner. The good news is, but being an electric uh, cooking uh, system, the flame's not blowing out. So I'm actually making a chicken curry. Butter chicken, and simmer sauce, got a few chicken fries here. I've got to put in a uh, proper cutting knife. So I'm going to use this daggy pocket knife, which I've already stabbed myself with once. Big rain drops now. I think my back's going to get wet, but... So 270 degree awning is definitely on the uh, to-do list. I need to get a cover over the back of this thing here. Crank the heat up a bit, I think. Okay, this isn't a bolt at this point. Turn that off. Electricity and water don't mix. We're going to sit in the car for a bit, and then we'll come back. So, the plan at this point, sit here and drink some port. When the rain stops, rush out, finish dinner. Probably come back in, in here and eat it. And uh, yeah, I don't think that might be for the night. I think the fire's all over. It's probably out by now, after I spent quite a bit of time getting it going with wet bark and uh, bits and pieces I could find around. I did have a bag of uh, logs, which I brought with me. And, um, Managed to just get a couple of those going too. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm back at it again. Slight break in the weather. Not much though. Uh, just check the uh, weather radar, and it looks like there's it's gonna, it's gonna keep going for another couple of hours, and then it'll clear up after that. But I can't wait that long for dinner. So I'm just gonna get this done. Get a little bit wet, and. Uh, Buddy's whinging and moaning, driving me crazy. I think he's hungry. I'm hoping that's all it is. <laughs> I know it's not good as a day, getting wet while you're having your dinner. Be home in my nice, dry, warm house. I'm standing in the rain, cooking dinner. Well, it's not amazing, but it's food. I did have ideas about sitting around the fire tonight and uh, having a little bit of a campfire but the weather had other ideas so I scrapped that early night get the iPad out watch a few videos and uh, yeah I'll see you in the morning can you hear that the rain stopped I've had about five mouthfuls. That'd be right, wouldn't it, hey? That'd be right. We got soaked for nothing. Just should have just waited a bit longer. All right. I'll see you in the morning, guys.
Well, last night was a bit of a washout, but still better than being home in front of the TV. I'm heading south now towards Mount Alexander, where it looks like I might be able to find a campsite. I've set the EchoFlow Delta Max to pull 600 watts from the inverter, and it's not making any signs of being overloaded, so that seems to be the sweet spot for my alternator. You might find your vehicle can draw more or less than 600 watts, but you have the flexibility to dial it up and down from 100 watts to 2000 watts, depending on the capacity of your alternator. Um, so what I did is I turned it down to 600 watts, and just today, it, I, it's, I've driven for about an hour and a half since the last camp, um, it's back up to 85%, um, so that's put about, must be about 40 odd percent of, of charge in the battery, um, and at no point did the inverter overload. It was quite comfortably taking that much power from the alternator and at the same time still charging the second battery in the car and you know doing all the other things that they need to do. So it seems to me that 600 watts is the sweet spot and it's basically charging six times faster than it, what, what it would do um, if it was charging from the DC port which is a, a fantastic win um, and at the same time it's not un, you know it's not taxing the car too much to the point where the inverter is sort of struggling to get enough uh, voltage so i can basically recharge this almost completely in probably about three hours of driving which is pretty good because the sort of you know trips that i like to do are lots of overnight stops um you know not don't spend a lot of time uh, I, I don't often spend multiple days at one spot so um the, it's the driving is when I want to do the charging the most. If you stop in one spot for a while, then solar becomes a much better option. And I am also looking at putting a solar panel on the roof, which will charge at the same time while I'm driving. And when I'm not driving as well, that'll be basically running continuously. So uh, yeah, so I think we've pretty much nailed that um, that charging while driving um, challenge. And um, and now uh, I can, yeah, I can basically use it as much as I need to while I'm at camp and, and just a, you know two or three hours the next day, it's going to charge it virtually full up again. This is at, right at the base of Mount Alexander. So we're south of Bendigo now. This is a real mountain biking place. And uh, there's obviously tracks and that coming down Mount Alexander here. And um, so a couple of guys on bikes and their dog just drove past, or rode past I should say. All right, so this is dinner here. Found my Bear grills knife, which is handy. I forgot I had that in my, uh, my kit bag. So I just got a sharp knife now. Sweet and sticky pork ribs. I don't know where to start. I need a bigger plate. Oh, I'll lose it this way. That is sensational. Alright guys, I'm gonna enjoy my dinner. I'll see you in the morning. So last night before I went to bed, I actually uh, put the rubbish up here on the roof. It was hanging on the back here, but uh, while I was sitting by the fire after I'd finished dinner, I could hear some rustling out here in the bushes. I thought, oh, okay, something's walking around out there and um, I got the torch out to see if I could see it. And uh, so I'd just hit record on my, um, on my iPhone. And uh, yeah, little fox just wandered out just over here. He just came through here and uh, went down there. I, I followed him over to there and he sort of ducked in through the uh, through the creek there. But uh, yeah, no doubt he's smelt those uh, nice sticky pork uh, spare ribs and uh, was sniffing around, seeing what he could find. And I 100% guarantee that after I went to bed, he would have been into that rubbish bag where the bones are. Um, so I chucked it up on the roof and yeah, in, in Canada and America, they you know they hide their food in trees to keep the bears away from it. In Australia, we've got to hide our rubbish in uh, on roof racks to keep foxes and other prowling animals away. And uh, so the bike's constantly riding backwards and forwards and uh, driving Buddy crazy. <laughs> he's very protective. I was letting him roam around free before, and um, you know he's pretty good. I'll call him. He comes back, but 
there's just too many cars and stuff and he hasn't got any real road sense so yeah he'll just wander out in front of something or other all right guys well i am all packed up and uh, ready to hit the road uh, the fire's out and i've left some firewood for the next guy which is always a good thing to do i think um we're going to uh, hit the road head home and uh, get the car unpacked and yeah just get ready for another week thanks for joining me on this little adventure and uh hit subscribe if you want to see some more and um i will see you in the next video